Good morning. Good morning. Quite as pretty a Saturday as it was last week, but you know, for early spring, this just really isn't too bad. Um, compost tea is the subject of the day. How many of y'all make compost tea or know about compost tea now? Wow, okay, got a, some people who are already doing it. Um, how many people are new here? How many people have never been here before? We got, okay, we've got a few new ones. Okay. Even though uh, most of these folks are seasoned veterans, I will tell you the uh, few ground rules that we have here. Number one, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Don't hesitate to interrupt me at any point. If it's anything I'm going to cover later, I'll put you off. If not, we'll uh, stop and talk about it right then. And secondly, the other game that we play, and all these people know exactly how this is done, but if you don't want to admit something is going on in your own yard, you simply stick up your hand and say, my neighbor couldn't come today, but they wanted me to ask you about this. So that's the way that you can ask anything. And uh, we may know what's going on, but if it makes you feel better, that's fine. Okay, my uh, intent this morning is to teach you a little bit about compost tea, to teach you about the benefits of what it will do, as well as what it is, and then for anyone who is interested in making your own tea, um, I'll show you how you can make, in effect, your own homegrown, so to speak, tea brewer. My friend Alton Grimm gave us a bunch of uh, five-gallon buckets that a friend had given him for the bakery up in Bernie. These are to give away to anybody that wants. If y'all need a bucket or two, or you just need a bucket, even if you aren't going to make uh, compost tea, we probably have some more around. So that's what these are here for you um, when you leave. Uh, compost tea. Compost tea can be used for a lot of different things. What compost tea is, is just a super concentration of all the beneficial microbes that come out of compost, basically. We know that compost is full of beneficial bacteria. We know that compost is full of beneficial fungi. We know that compost is full of various things that we call protozoans. Um, there are a lot of good things in compost. Making what we call compost tea enables us to take the good stuff out of the compost and multiply it a thousandfold or ten thousandfold or a hundred thousandfold in the case of the bacteria. Fungi don't reproduce that quickly, but compost tea is actually something which is brewed. And if you want to see a big time brewer, that thing right outside over there has the gray top on it. That's what you get if you want to pay about eighteen hundred dollars and go out and buy your own compost tea brewer. I'm also going to show you how to make a mini compost tea brewer. That makes 25 gallons at a time. Little buckets, you can make about 5 gallons at a time. Is your tea as good as what's made in a big brewer? Well, the way that my business partner and I learned about compost tea, we paid several hundred dollars a piece to go to a seminar taught by a lady named Dr. Lane Ingham, who is the world authority on compost tea. Part of this seminar that was held up in Austin, she invited people to bring their own compost tea makers, people who are experienced brewers, and the way she taught us how to analyze compost tea was by looking at all these samples of teas that different people made, and then we rated the teas as to which was the absolute best tea there and which was the absolute worst tea there. There were about 10 or 12 people brought compost tea brewers to make uh, compost tea for us to analyze, the most expensive was a machine that Malcolm Beck's wife bought for him that was about a $20,000 machine mm -hmm. called a World uh, Wor Worm Gold Compost Tea Maker. Mm -hmm. The cheapest thing was Bruce Dooley's mm -hmm. five-gallon bucket, yeah. that, uh, you know, which is basically what I'm going to show you how to make this morning. The number one tea, and there were a lot of them in between, things ranging in price from five hundred dollars to five or $6,000 in tea brewers. The best tea there was made in Malcolm Beck's $20,000 machine. The second best tea out of a dozen different kinds of teas was Bruce's five gallon bucket. So you can make pretty good tea uh, without having to have a real expensive uh, setup. Now if you want to make large quantities of compost tea, well, then you may want to take this and expand it into a 25 or a 50 gallon drum or something like that. But the principle will be the same 
no matter what size, no matter what <laughs> amount of tea you are making. Yes, sir. What's the criteria for evaluating the best versus the least? You look at, um, which we've already done with our tea this morning, by the way, uh, with a good microscope, you look at the number and kinds of bacteria that oh. you have in it. You look at the number and kinds of fungi that you have in it. You look at the number and kinds of protozoans that you have in it. Those are the pre three principal things you're looking at. Um, and it's it helps to have learned from an expert, or in my case, I'm an old research biologist by training. I spent a lot of time looking through microscopes in my college days, so it was sort of second nature. But it's based on the number and variety of, uh, of microbes that are in there. And, of course, the number and variety of microbes you get in there, part of that depends on the compost that you started with, and part of it depends on, you know, exactly how you stimulated the tea in the brewing process, so to speak. Let me tell you, first of all, about some of the benefits of compost tea, and then we'll talk about exactly how it's made and a few other things. But compost tea serves as a natural fungicide. If it's sprayed on the leaves, you have enough beneficial fungi in compost tea that they tend to occupy all the sites where bad fungi might actually attack a plant, and plants whose leaves are coated periodically with compost tea show an increased immunity to fungal infections. Compost tea may include a bunch of microbes which are damaging to insects. We find that, com that plants that are sprayed with compost tea are more resistant to insect damage, and when compost tea is actually drenched onto the soil, it improves the nutrient usage and it makes your fertilizers more effective. In some cases it makes the plants more drought resistant. In almost all cases it simply helps things to grow better. One of the things that Elaine showed us when we took the course was, uh, and this was actually taken in Australia, you know what the big pivot irrigators are that you, when you fly over and you see crop circles down on the fields? Um, they had taken, and I've forgotten what the crop was, but in half that pivot they applied compost tea to it, and in the other half they didn't. The half that they didn't, the soil was about 60% plants and about 20% bare soil. You could tell there was growth there, but it was, you know, there's just almost as much bare dirt as there were plants. The half that they sprayed with compost tea was absolutely solid green. I wish we know what the difference in harvest was, but this was a place where they were, you know, paying her for her analysis and she showed them the picture of the difference in the compost tea treated side and the untreated side, so what did they do? They went back and treated the other side and the whole thing turned out pretty good. Uh, but it does, it does increase yields. Uh, there's a lady up near Austin, a lady named, uh, um, oh, what is her last name? Betsy Ross is her name. And uh, she, uh, her big deal is raising uh, organic beef. She raises longhorns as a principal thing she produces, but she sprays her pastures with compost tea, and she has the fattest, best-looking cattle you've ever seen, probably because of the increased quality of the forage that the cows are eating. So there are lots and lots of things that compost tea does well. There are things we don't fully understand. Yes, sir? What's the difference, then, of using compost tea versus just uh, spreading good compost? I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Okay. I'll tell you about that in just a second. We'll talk about really how you make it. Uh, one of her interesting stories, one of her employees is a fellow that came back from Vietnam um, with some sort of horrible flesh attacking, I don't know whether they thought it was a fungus or a bacteria or whatever else. It wasn't lethal, but said every time the weather warmed up in the summer, his skin literally started falling off. He literally, people couldn't stand to look at him. He, you know, had to wear a hat and long sleeves and everything everywhere he went. And he'd been to every 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 uh, hospital in the country trying to figure out what it was, and they couldn't figure out anything to control it. It was something that showed up in warm weather, and then in cool weather it kind of grow a skin back, and in the summer it looked kind of like a cadaver again. Well, one of the things that she had him do on, and this lady. Her, her company, she used to be a, a professor of microbiology at the University of Oregon, and then the compost tea business grew into quite a business for her, and it was successful enough she now has offices on five continents and literally works all over the world. But they were dealing with a uh, some sort of fungal problem on some trees outside of a courthouse building. Some